All right. First new uh, first vocabulary term today. Yesterday, yesterday we went over what an altitude was. Comes from a vertice perpendicular to the opposite side, so they should form right angles. That is an altitude. What I'm going to introduce right now is called a median. Median. Medians start at a vertice. Ready for this though? But it's drawn to the opposite sides midpoint midpoint it is not perpendicular that's an altitude vertice to opposite sides midpoint tell me something else you can mark on your diagram then what else is true about triangle abc then if ad is a median it's drawn from vertice a down to the midpoint of the opposite side what else can we mark on our diagram right now that is true now that you know what a median is a median Vertex to midpoint. What else is true about the diagram? Uh, one, Anna, what else is true? BD is congruent to DC. BD, congruent to DC because D is a midpoint. Good work, good work. So that is a median, all good? Make sure we separate median from altitude. Altitudes form right angles, medians go to midpoints. Grab your compass, grab your compass. How do I construct a median? I want to do a median from C to AB now, all right? C to AB, so coming from point C. So what are we going to need to find on AB? Midpoint, midpoint right? Using my compass, how can I find a midpoint? Oh, we know, oh, we know, we know. We know how to find a midpoint. Take your compass, open and put your compass point on A or B. Open it up more than half the length. Make a good size half circle type arc. Go over to point A, let's do it again. How many points of intersection am I looking for? Two, not just one. Please don't draw in anything, don't draw anything, don't draw in anything. Just have your arc marks. Okay, ready, take a look up here. Would that be a median? That's not a median. Does it come from a vertex? No, that's not a median. Ready? Come on, come on, dig deep. What is it though? What did I just draw in with my yellow dashed line there? It's not a median, but it is a, it goes through the midpoint, but what's the line called? This is a perpendicular bisector. Notice the difference. A perpendicular bisector does not have to go to a vertex. Medians do. So how can I use this construction? Take your straight edge right now. Line it up. Go ahead, line it up. But now why are we lining up? So we can make a point on AB that represents the midpoint. All right, so line it up. Go ahead, line it up. And then just make a little marking on AB where your straight edge goes through. and then connect it to point C, which would be your median now. That is a median. How many of these are in a triangle? How many medians? Not and the answer is not infinite. We already drew two. How many are in a triangle? Three. Yep, you're going to draw all three here in a second. But we got to play a little game first. I'm sure we all love these math games. All right, let's see how far we've come. I have four diagrams up here. Every diagram has CD on it. I want to know the best name for CD. And here are your three choices, your four choices. You can choose perpendicular bisector. We went over day one. You can choose angle bisector. Went over yesterday. You can choose altitude, which we went over yesterday. Or you can choose our new one from today. It's a median. So based on the information I've given you, which one of these four is CD? All right. So that's the little game we're going to play. So look at diagram A, look at segment CD, 
what's the best name for segment CD. Call on somebody here on a, in a second. Don't add in your own markings. That, that's all I'm giving you. What is CD in this diagram? Is it a perpendicular bisector, angle bisector, altitude, or median? No in our vocab now. All right, best name for it? 12? Um, I said perpendicular bisector. Okay, I agree with the perpendicular part. How do you know it bisects? Are there any congruent marks on there? No, no right? So I don't, it looks like maybe, but I don't know for sure unless, unless I do this. Then it's a perpendicular bisector. All right, so... The perpendicular part, yes, but the bisector part, no. So if it's just perpendicular, coming from a vertice, perpendicular to the opposite side. Altitude. Okay, everyone good? Everyone all right on why it's not a perpendicular bisector? I don't know if it bisects, it's just perpendicular. So the best name for it is an altitude. All right, let's go to B. What's the best name for CD if I put two inches on both those sides there? Two inches on both those sides. Best name for it? One, Anna? Um, median. Median, good. Why is it not a perpendicular bisector? Again, I got the bisector part. I don't have the perpendicular part, though. So it's a median. Diagram C. What's the best name for CD there? What do we think here? Seven? Good job. You're an angle bisector. Yes, yes, yes. And then what about CD and part D? Be careful here. Remember, hey, I'm looking at C, D, that right there. It's the best name for that segment. Three, Spence. Good job. Excellent. That was a tough one. Altitude. Starts at a vertice, perpendicular to the opposite side. Yep. Good work. Questions? All right, let's go back to your medians now. Let's go back to your medians. Go ahead and graph that triangle coming up. Alrighty, uh, just so we don't uh, waste time here. We're gonna find the midpoint of each side. Can we just find the midpoint of BC together? I don't think I need to give you the formula, do I? Can you find the point that's in the middle of BC for me and mark it right here? There you go. And then draw in the median, grab a straight edge for me too. This is important because we wanna see where they intersect. Grab a straight edge. And draw in the median to be from A to B C. You guys right here, this section right here, you guys are gonna find the midpoint of A C for me x1 plus x2 divided by 2, right? y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This, these two groups over here are going to find the midpoint of AB only, okay? You guys find the midpoint of AB. This crew right over here find the midpoint of AC. Go ahead. x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2.
Okay, uh, this group here, what'd you guys get for the midpoint of AC? Anybody midpoint of AC? Go ahead, anybody. Five, five. five, five, everyone in agreement? Five, five, good. All right, everyone, five, five. Make sure we jot it down and graph it for me too and draw in that median to AC. Five, five. Group over here, where you guys get for AB? 5-3, everyone in agreement? 5-3, okay. Jot it down, let's graph it and draw in the median from C. Oh, breaking news, shocker, huh? What do, you, what do we notice about all three medians, huh? What do you notice about all three of those medians? They meet at one point. Just a point of comparison. So they all meet at a point. You want to use a big vocab word for me? I've been trying to stress to you guys. They're all concurrent. Concurrent. All right? All concurrent. So remember my chart we started off with today? I told you there was going to be a fourth row. Yep. We just learned that, uh, hey, the medians are all concurrent right the medians are all concurrent so what's that special name it's already on your paper i'm not gonna it's not a breaking news here it's called the centroid how about that name huh no center in it like the other ones it's called the centroid all right and the center what is the point of the centroid here what is that point what is that point of the centroid where all the medians meet is it six, four? Yeah. Count over six from the or one, two, three, four, five, six, up four. All right, so last that was it, medians. Medians meet at the centroid. And then there is a special fact about the centroid, just like there was about the circumcenter and in center. Centroid, whew, here we go, breaks any median. into a ratio of two to one, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, 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 stop, stop, here's what I mean. What do I mean by it breaks any median up into a ratio of two to one? Let's say this part is 10 right here. That distance is 10. On the other side of the median will be 5. See what I mean by 2 to 1 now. One piece is double the other. Let me do another one for you. Let's say this piece right here is 6. The piece on the other side, 12. All right, we good? Which one's the bigger piece? Because that's always the question. What's the bigger piece? Centroid to vertice is always the bigger one, okay? Centroid to vertice is always your bigger piece. Everyone all right with two to one now? One piece is double the other on the median. And the bigger piece is always from the centroid to the vertice. Centroid to the vertice. Questions? All right, let's find out. There are. M is the centroid. M is the centroid. WM is 16. How big is the whole median WX? How big is the whole median WX? All right, that's 16. Before I find the whole median, what's the other part of it then? XM. XM. If that's 16, it breaks it up into a ratio of 2 to 1. How long is MX then? Uh, five. What's that? Eight. eight. Good work. Yep, that's eight. So to find WX, I add the two together. 24. 
All right, next up, YM is 12. What about YO and MO? That's a centroid. Let's start with MO, and then I'll go to YO. How about MO? MO, 6, 24, because remember, that's the bigger piece. Centroid to vertice is the bigger piece, so I double it. Good job. 24, I won't ask anybody about YO. I'm just adding them together to get 36. We're good. All right, one more with the center. Hold on, I just kind of gave that away, but with five. Wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do I know this is a centroid question? Oh, you're doing centroids today, so that's how I know. I'm just going to assume it's a centroid. All right, Tuesday's quiz, you read a problem like this. How are you going to know, G how are you going to know this is a centroid problem? Go ahead, Kelsey. It says median. It says me right? Everyone see it says medians? All meet at G. If medians meet at a point, that tells me, oh, G must be a centroid. That's why we got to know... Okay, circumcenter, perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, in center, medians, centroid. So G is a centroid, BG is 2x plus 10, GE is 3x minus 1. Find the length of the whole median BE. All right, let me write something that is false up here. 2x plus 10 is equal to 3x minus 1. False, false, false. You know they're not equal. It's a two to one ratio, not one to one, two to one. That's false. Fix it for me. That is false. Fix it. That is, don't try solving that because that's false. Fix it. If it's in a ratio of two to one, how can you fix it? Talk to me. Anna, one. Uh, you can uh, double three X minus one. Okay, I could double this part right here, right? Or did anybody, what could I do to this side if I wanted to, Iris? Divide it by two or take multiply it by a half. Either one, don't do both, but one or the other. Multiply the right side by two or divide the left side by a half or multiply or divide the left side by two. All right, everyone good? All right, go ahead. You're on your own now. Find BE here. BE, so you have to find X, plug it back in. What are you getting for X? So we know we're on the right start here. What are we getting for X? Seven, what are you getting for X? Three. Three, good work. All right, then we plug three back in. And when you're ready, what do you get for the length of the entire median BE? Anna, one? Uh, 24. Good job, 24, 16 and eight. All right, any questions? I'm going to start the homework with you. You got a big, the first problem on the homework is a pretty big job. Let's fill in our chart now, right? This is going to be your study guide for Tuesday's quiz.
I'm going to fill in the perpendicular bisector row with you, and then you guys are on your own. Best of your ability, describe to me what a perpendicular bisector is. All right. So let me first, actually, you know what? Let's draw it first, because I think if we draw it first, it's easier to describe your drawing. So let's draw a triangle in. Do I need to start it at a vertice? No, this is the only one, only one of the four that does not have to start from a vertice. The other three have to start from a vertice. This one does not. So let's just draw a line in, a perpendicular bisector. Does not have to start at a vertice. All right, now you tell me what marking should go on my triangle. If that's that green line I have up there is a perpendicular bisector, what should I be drawing? 11. What should I be drawing on this? Good. Right angle here and a congruent marks on the side it's drawn through. Describe to me that drawing now. What is a perpendicular bisector in your own words? I'm not looking for one single definition. In your own words, what is that line here? Here we go. Eight. Um, Roll with whatever you got. Um, line that okay, well, hold on, hold on. Let me write. A line. I like the good start. A line, yep. It goes a triangle forming a right angle um, that splits it in half. Okay, the, perfect. The only thing I'm going to revise is instead of triangle, it goes to a side. Okay, a line that is perpendicular to a side and what's it do to that side, Sophia? Split the perfect to a side and splits it in half. Good enough for me. What's the point of concurrency called for this per If I drew in all three of them, what's the point of concurrency called? 11? Circumcenter. And what's so good about it? Special property of a circumcenter. Get you guys rolling. Four. Equal equidistant from where? That's in center. That's coming up. What are these points called? Equidistant from the vertices. All right, there it is, guys. There it is. So keep going. Fill out the rest of the chart. You can talk with other people if you want about what, what are you drawing, what are you filling in. And then you got a couple uh, centroid questions at the end. It's not too much at all tonight. The big one's the chart, though. This is basically your study guide for Tuesday's quiz.